Do you want to extend your flight times? Learn how batteries work and make one yourself? Watch this two-part video, get any confusion out of the way and you should be up and running in no time. Hello friends, today we'll discuss about lithium-ion batteries, more specifically the application of lithium-ion batteries in RC models such as quadcopters or fixed wings. Chapter 1. What makes a lithium-ion battery a better choice than the LiPo battery that is more commonly used? On the plus side, lithium-ion batteries weigh much less than their LiPo counterparts. Lithium-ion batteries are widely used in consumer electronics and they are regarded as the safest possible option. They take up less space for the same milliamp hour rating. They are relatively inexpensive and widely available. And finally, they have a wider working voltage from 4.2 all the way to 2.65 as stated by the manufacturer of the battery we are going to use here. But to be honest, I would not discharge it below 3 volts per cell to be on the safe side, because then you might not get enough thrust depending on the KV of the motors that you're going to use on your model. On the downside, lithium ion batteries are not made for performance. With that in mind, you cannot expect them to have the same charge or discharge ratings that a LiPo has. For example, the battery we're going to use, according to the manufacturer's spreadsheet, cannot be charged above 0.5C and cannot be discharged above 2C continuous. And that means that the only application that they can have is when endurance with low amp draw is required. That is pretty much all you are giving up, but you have to be very careful when choosing a battery and matching it to your model. It is no fun and games when a battery blows up either due to exceeding its max discharge or by charging excessively. Chapter 2. What type of lithium-ion battery should you choose? Lithium-ion batteries come in many shapes and sizes, but the most common one, and the one that we're going to use here, is an 18650. More specifically, the Samsung 186535E, as you can see on your screen. Chapter 3. What will you need to actually make a lithium-ion pack? Well, of course, you're going to need some batteries, depending on your application. Stick around to the end of this video to figure out how many batteries you will need to use. You will need some nickel ribbon metal strips to weld the packs together. You will need some glue or hot glue, a kitchen scale. You will need a balance cable, again the number depending on the cells you choose. You will need an XT60 male plug along with a positive and a negative cable. I would suggest anywhere between 12, 14 or 16 AWG size. You will need a soldering iron capable of reaching 400 degrees Celsius and some solder wire. And most importantly, a capable welding machine. You can find links for any one of them down in the description. Chapter 4. Finding out how much batteries are going to be needed and making a custom pack. The way this works is that if you connect two batteries in parallel, meaning that if you connect the negatives and the positives together, now the battery behaves as one big pack, having the same voltage as any individual battery in the pack, but now it has double the capacity. If the same two batteries are connected in series, meaning that if you connect the negative to the positive as shown here, you will not get a capacity increase but the voltage will be doubled. The same principle can be used for any combination of batteries to get the capacity and voltage required for the task at hand. In my case, I plan to replace a 5200 mAh 4S LiPo pack. So my motors are made for 4S batteries, that means that I have to use at least 4 batteries in series to get the proper working voltage. This battery is a 3350 mAh battery, 
so using four batteries in series would get the job done. But I can lift more weight with my quadcopter and that means that I can put on more battery weight. So I will need to add one more pack to this battery and that means that I will have to use four more batteries to get 6700 milliamp hours. Now we have more capacity and less weight than the previous LiPo. But to be honest, I'm afraid that 16 amps, which is the continuous discharge of this battery, will not cut it. Let's take a look at the manufacturer's spreadsheet. Here we can see the max discharge current is 8000 milliamps or 8 amps, and the max burst discharge current is 13000 milliamps or 13 amps. That is for each battery connected in parallel. In my previous example, we saw one pack of 4S with 3350 milliamp power. Adding another pack totals at 6700 milliamp hours and will be able to handle 16 amps. If we add one more pack in parallel, we would get almost 10,000 milliamp hours and a max continuous amp draw of 24 amps. Now let's go to the website of the motor manufacturer and see how much amps does my individual motor draw with the propeller that I have chosen. And now we can see that 600 grams is roughly how much thrust I'm going to need if I use the 10,000 mAh battery just for hovering. This number comes from weighing the craft and dividing it by 4. Here we can see that the amp draw for 600 grams and a 15 by 5.5 probe is 3.5 amps for any individual motor, well within the efficiency range. Multiplying by 4 gives us 14 amps and we have to take into consideration that not only the motors draw amps from the battery but all the other electronics as well, so we have to have a safety margin. We can use the amp draw meter like this one to figure out what is the amp draw of the copter when in rest and then add it to the requested amp draw. This battery can output 24 amps continuously and that is equivalent to 900 grams of thrust which gives us plenty of room for normal flight and climbing. Unfortunately, even with the bigger battery bursting at 40 amps we cannot go full throttle on these motors. But my autopilot is programmed to never request full throttle from the motors within the flight envelope. All things considered, I'm proceeding to make my custom 10,000 mAh battery and I will show you how in the next video of the series. If you found this guide useful, please consider subscribing and giving a thumbs up as this will help me provide more related content. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.